Before diving into the actual implementation, first let us try to understand the flow of data from the database into the Spring framework. This explanation is related to the multiple database connection. We'll see in a while how does it relate to the multiple database connection. So we have the database Oracle and in this database we have a table called restaurant and this restaurant table has three columns the ID address and the name what spring does is spring boot provides a bean called data source which connects to the database and can perform various CRUD operations on the database and there are various ways to use this data source bean for the CRUD operations but let us concentrate on two main concepts the first one is the rest controller can directly use the data source bean to get the connection and then prepare the statement and fetch the result in the result set these steps are a kind of boilerplate code and we have to repeat these steps wherever you, we want to perform the CRUD operations another way is it provides entity manager bin and this entity manager bin along with the hibernate uh, asks the developer to create the entities or the models which can reflect the structure of the tables in the database here for example you can see the restaurant entity maps to the restaurant table in the oracle database the id maps to the id address to the address and name to the name and in the same way we will have a lot of other entities as well now we got the entity manager which helps the developer to perform the CRUD operations on the tables but we need a layer for the transaction management there comes a transaction manager bean which provides the transaction management on the entity manager so these all this all structure is very high level and we are not going in depth or in detail into it it is just to make you understand the flow of the data from the database to the rest controllers in the spring boot the spring data jpa repository has the access to this transaction management along with the entity manager to perform the CRUD operations here what jpa repository says i'm not interested in all the entities which you are going to provide in entity manager i'm just interested in one of the entity and i just want to perform the CRUD operations on this entity itself and then comes the rest controller so the rest controller just uses the jpa repository object for the CRUD operations it just calls uh, the methods directly which are defined in the jp repository for example save or find all and so on so the reason to explain this in the multiple database connection the implementation is we need to define the entities for each of these data source entity manager and transaction manager for every database which we are going to connect in a single application okay now let us jump directly into the implementation let us start by creating a project new project starter and i'm going to give the name as multiple db multiple db the rest of the things i'm going to leave as it is next i'll use spring web spring data jpa maria db oracle click on next and finish we also need swagger so i'm adding the spring doc open api ui as well i have made the code changes let us uh, just go through the code and then we'll run the application here i have created two different package hierarchy the first one for the primary database connection and the other for the secondary database connection all of these controllers models repo everything which prepends with primary relates to the primary database and the ones with secondary are related to the secondary database we have a user detail entity in the primary database you can see i have annotated them with table name equals user underscore detail and you'll see the columns annotation as well we'll see the reason for that in a while and this model is used in the user repository one thing to note in the user repository is i have not annotated this repository interface with at the rate repository and then comes the controller which uses this repository user controller and we have two operations the get mapping and the post mapping 
get mapping fetches the list of user detail and the post mapping creates a user and returns the list of users. Here the primary database is MariaDB. I'll show that as well in a while. So let us go to the secondary database connection. The secondary database here is Oracle database. The model or the entity is the restaurant. Restaurant has ID, name and address. Then we have repository, restaurant repository. And this is also not annotated with at the rate repository. Then comes the restaurant controller. This has two REST APIs. One is the get mapping for restaurants which returns the list of restaurants and a post mapping which creates a new restaurant and returns the new list of restaurants. Now we have the configurations for the data flow but we need the configuration for the connection. That is done in the primary database connection. We have something called primary database connection dot Java and for secondary database connection we have secondary database connection.java and these configurations are stored in the application.properties. Here you can see the database connection configuration for the primary database follows with properties spring.primary.datasource URL and username and password as well. This connects to the MariaDB with the database project underscore DB and we have the secondary database connection with spring secondary database URL for Oracle database and it uses the project DB user. Let me also show you the database. Here we have project underscore DB. This is MariaDB. Here you can see this is a MariaDB and which has a user detail table. Then we have the Oracle DB, Oracle DB, which has the restaurant table. Let's come back over here and understand the configuration in the primary database connection. Uh, the secondary database connection configuration is also similar to what we see in the primary database connection. Just the bean names differ. Here the class is annotated with at the rate configuration, which means we are telling the spring container to look out for this class because we are going to define the beans in this class and whenever uh, the server is getting started create the beans from this class and add it in the container. Uh, we are using the enable JPA repositories annotation. This is because we use the spring data JPA and if we are using spring data JPA then we need to use this annotation. You might have seen the explanation at the start of this video wherein we require three different beans, the data source bean, the entity manager bean and the transaction manager bean. Those three beans are defined in this class. So for the data source bean, what we are doing is here because this is the primary database connection. Each of the bean is annotated with at the rate primary. We are giving the bean names as primary DB data source for the data source. We use the URL, username and password from the properties defined in the application.properties. I'm using the add the rate value annotation to fetch the value stored in these properties. You can also use the environment property or the configuration properties annotation. But to keep it simple and understandable, I'm using the value annotation to fetch the values for each of these properties from the application properties here. And using these properties, we are creating a data source bean within this method. In the primary entity manager factory, we are creating a bean of type local container entity manager factory bean. You can see here we are using the data source entity which was created earlier in the data source. Since we need to inform the database entity manager about the place of the models or the entities which are available for this specific database we have to define the packages list of packages to be used by this entity in the packages method and this entity manager is used by the primary transaction manager bean to create a jpa transaction manager few things to note here is whenever you are annotating this enable jpa repository you have to define the entity manager factory reference which is primary entity manager factory this guy and transaction manager reference which we have as primary transaction manager here yeah. the base packages this base packages will have the list of packages where the jpa repository interfaces are defined you might have seen earlier we have not 
annotated them with the at the rate repositories. So here, because of this package definition, the beans will be created. Similar to this, we also define the secondary database connection. The same configuration, only the bean names are different. We are using this configuration and spring.secondary data source URL. We are connecting to the secondary database. You'll see secondary DB data source, secondary entity manager factory, and this entity manager factory has to be provided with the packages for the entities and these entities are present in secondary dot models in our case and also secondary transaction manager we also need to refer them in the gpa repositories enable gpa repositories the entity manager factory reference transaction manager reference and the base packages where we have the repository interfaces secondary dot repo having said that let us start the application and see if this works out localhost swagger because we have included swagger library here you can see the user controller is for the primary database connection and the restaurant controller is for the secondary database connection try it out you can see we have two entries the scrooge mcduck and louis duck let's try to create another entry number three dv duck create the new entry has created also you can see you can see in the get operations again here this is for the primary database let's see if we can connect to the secondary database as well yeah there are two restaurants Let's create a new entry, number three, Albeck, which is in Bangalore. Execute, and you can see the new entry has been added. Here, you can also see in the database, this is the Oracle database, restaurant. A new restaurant has been added. Same thing, user detail. This shows that we can have multiple database connections in a single Spring Boot application. There was one thing which we have seen here, user detail, we have annotated them with table and column annotations. Let's try to comment these and start the application and see if it works. I mean the primary database connection works. Start host user detail try it out no it doesn't the reason you can see it says project db database doesn't have the table user detail user detail what's happening here is it is not adding any underscore in the table name whenever we we are trying to fetch from the database using this entity and the reason for this is that we have created the beans for the data source the entity manager and the transaction manager manually and we are not using any of these beans that are created by the spring boot application and that is the reason none of the hibernate properties are set by default here we have to set the hibernate properties by ourselves there is a method in this entity manager we have to do it in the entity manager dot properties you can see there's a method called properties and this properties method can be used to set the hibernate properties which helps us to override the properties to hmm, hibernate properties let us do that i'll create a map map of string string props equals new hash map 
put in this props put hibernate dot strategy and the value for this is camel casing to underscores naming strategy dot class dot get name use this property here let's cross check if we have yes we have commented these let me start the application localhost swagger now we are able to fetch it that is because we have set this physical naming strategy property to camel case to underscore naming strategy so there is one more thing what we can see is so in the primary database connection configuration can we avoid adding the qualifiers or the bean namings so here you see we have defined a lot of qualifiers in both the places but we can get rid of these in the primary database connection what I'm going to do is I'll change the name for this as data source remove this and remove this guy don't need the qualifier qualifier this is done and I need to change the name I'm changing the name of these methods because the bean name will be the method name entity manager factory remove this remove the qualifier and name this method as transaction stop the server Save. I'll start the application and see if this works. Run. There are some errors. So the reason for this is we have removed these annotations, but we did not remove those references from here. What I'm going to do, I'll just remove these two as well. Save and run. The application has started. Let's see if it works. Localhost users try it out. It works. Post request launchpad macquack. Execute. So it's created can see in the get request as well so it is working and the reason it is working is let me just show you control Z so entity reference manager factory reference if you go in here the default name for this bean this reference bean is entity manager and similarly for the transaction manager reference the default name is transaction manager because we have removed the names from the bean and the method names are set according to the names which we have in the properties here entity manager and transaction manager this application worked out so we we can do this for primary database but it is not recommended to try it on the secondary database okay that's it from this video see you in the next video thank you